In today's video, we're going to be talking about the precious metals, primarily silver. We're going to be explaining its intrinsic value, and we're going to be talking about why there's a demand for silver all over the planet. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well, feeling great, and staying safe. It's a great day to have a great day. Today, I wanted to talk about the global demand for silver, along with go through a couple quick examples explaining silver's intrinsic value. We're going to get into it, but really quick, just in case you're new, make sure to subscribe for daily videos. Also, subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content. Brand new video over there, go check it out. The link will be in the description. And if you want to get some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel, I would really, really, really appreciate it. Any and all merchandise can be found by clicking the first link in the description section down below. Thank you in advance, it's more than appreciated. But today is Sunday, June 6th, 2021, as I'm posting the video. For me, it's actually Friday, June 4th filming the video a couple days in advance. In case you're wondering, on Friday, as I'm filming the video, the spot price of silver is $27.77, which means it's up 34 cents, and gold is $1,889.10, which means it's up 18.30, and the gold to silver ratio is currently in the 67 to 68 to one range. Of course, that's as I'm filming not as I'm editing posting or as you're watching it so head on down to the comments and let me know the date and time you're viewing the video and what the current spot price and or gold to silver ratio is for you I'm always curious so today I wanted to talk about an article that I just discovered it was just posted a couple of days ago just a week and a half ago maybe it's titled four factors that drive silver demand by Melissa Pastilli, and I thought it was pretty interesting. I was going through it, and a lot of what the article said pretty much further explains what I've been explaining for a couple of years, and I thought it was pretty interesting to get a different perspective. So, first one on the list would be industrial fabrication. I'm gonna post a little thing up on the screen. You can read it if you like, but I'm gonna explain it my way. As I've been saying for several years now, silver is one of the greatest conductors of both heat and electricity. Now what's funny about that is that it took me until last year to actually realize that silver isn't one of the best conductors of both heat and electricity. It's actually the number one greatest conductor of both heat and electricity. And what's cool about this section on the list talking about industrial fabrication, it also includes solar panels and cars, which is something else that I've been saying for the longest time. Silver is used all over the place. It's used in batteries, cars, photography. Like I said, the greatest conductor of both heat and electricity. Silver is used all over the place. So moving on over to the second thing on the list, it would be probably the most obvious if you tap some random person on the shoulder and ask them what you think silver is used for. Jewelry. Once again, I'm gonna be posting a little screenshot up on the screen. You're more than welcome to read it. I'm going to explain things my way. So when we think of jewelry, we probably think of both silver and gold. Probably the most popular types of jewelry you can get your hands on. Doesn't matter if it's a ring, a necklace, a watch, or something else. Silver and gold, jewelry. That's what most people think of when they think of jewelry to begin with. But it's also platinum as well. We can't forget about platinum. You can get yourself a platinum chain, you can get yourself a platinum ring. You can get yourself a platinum watch. And even though I've never seen or heard of anyone having palladium jewelry, I know it's used for jewelry as well. Now, it's also important to remember, in addition to the four precious metals, there's a fifth precious metal called rhodium. Now, what's funny about rhodium is every time I talk about it, I get at least one person saying, What in the world is rhodium? Rhodium is an incredibly expensive precious metal. It's white in color, similar to silver, platinum, and palladium, but the spot price of rhodium is well over $10,000. It blows gold out of the water. Rhodium is an incredibly valuable precious metal. And what's cool about rhodium is that they don't necessarily make jewelry out of it. I don't believe anyone has ever made a rhodium chain or a rhodium watch or anything like that, but Rhodium is tied into jewelry because they use it to coat jewelry. It goes over top 
of silver. It goes over top of platinum, palladium, potentially even over gold. It's a much harder, more dense metal, so they use it to coat over top of the jewelry just to make it a little bit more sturdy, just to prevent it from getting scratches or dents or dings or anything like that. Moving away from jewelry, let's talk about the third on the list. And this would have to be, hands down, my favorite. Coins, rounds, and bars. Now this is probably my favorite for a pretty obvious reason. Should be pretty evident. I like coins. But you want to know what's more important than me liking coins? Countries all over the planet liking coins too. You see, silver and gold, they're internationally viewed as money. And they've always been, by the way. Doesn't matter where you go. Everyone wants the silver. Everyone wants the gold. Everyone needs the silver. Everyone needs the gold. It doesn't matter if it's a coin, a round, or a bar. It doesn't matter if it's jewelry. It doesn't matter if it's something else. Silver and gold are internationally recognized as money no matter where you go. That's why you can go to a variety of different countries and you can get either a junk silver coin from them or potentially a pure silver coin from them. That's why you can go to Canada, you can get the Maple Leaf. You can go to Mexico, you can get the Libertad. You can go to Austria, get the Philharmonic. You can go to Australia, you can get the Kangaroo. You can go to China and get the Panda. You can go to a variety of different countries. They all have their own silver coins. They all have their own gold coins as well because silver and gold are internationally recognized as money. In addition to being internationally recognized as money, right here in the US, it's constitutionally recognized as money. Did you know it was originally decided that nothing besides silver and gold should be used as payment? That kind of went out the window. But we were also on the gold standard for quite a bit of time. The gold and the silver constitutionally recognized as money. In addition to it being internationally and constitutionally recognized as money, let's quickly talk about how it's also biblically recognized as money. It's in the Old Testament. It's in the New Testament. Gold and silver have always been money. Now, fourth and final on the list I want to talk about silverware. Again, I'll put a little thing up on screen right here. You can read what the article has to say. But I'm going to say what I want to say regarding silverware. I actually was never really interested in picking up silverware for stacking purposes. Up until maybe a couple weeks ago, I was thinking about maybe heading on over to a different coin shop or an antique shop, potentially, maybe even a pawn shop, maybe even a thrift shop. A lot of them carry coins, and if they carry coins, it's probably a pretty strong chance that they might, potentially, carry some silverware. Maybe some really old silverware, maybe an antique of some sort. Now silverware, aka silver utensils, forks, knives, and spoons, and whatnot, pretty sure we've all heard the saying, born with a silver spoon in your mouth. Silver, even way, way, way back in the day, was something of value. And what do people often partner up with something that is of value? They partner it up with royalty, or riches, or wealth. Upper class families, those who can afford it. And what's funny is, just a couple weeks ago, during a VIP club live stream, I go live every Wednesday around 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Link in the description if you want to tune into weekly live streams, daily silver and gold deal alerts, monthly giveaways, and much, much more. We were talking about silverware and how it was used way back in the day. Because guess what? It wasn't only used to eat. It was used for protection. People had the belief that if silver came in contact with poison, it would turn black. And back then, a lot of people would try to poison rich families or family members or those that they wanted to get even with 
or those that they wanted to steal from. They would poison their food, and the person eating the food, someone who came from potentially wealth, would eat with silverware. That way they would know if their food has been poisoned because it would turn black. Now that was just the belief at the time, but I thought it was pretty interesting, and we did talk about that in the VIP club just a couple of weeks ago. That was news to me at the time. I looked it up, I confirmed it, and I thought it was actually pretty cool. So I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know. In addition to the four things that I listed here in today's video because of the article that I was going through, what are some of your other favorite uses? Because silver has 10,000 different uses, by the way. Silver has 10,000 different jobs, and I know there's a lot of stuff out there that's useful now, but oftentimes in the future, as time goes by, as we advance, things become obsolete. But the cool thing about silver and how versatile it is, 10,000 different uses. My God, if you take 5,000 of those uses away, it still has 5,000 jobs. I don't believe silver's going anywhere. I believe silver will always be valuable. I believe there will always be a global silver demand. And I believe that silver will always have real intrinsic value. And same thing goes for the other precious metals. And if anybody's interested in joining the Precious Metals VIP Club, it's where I can do things on my own terms. Not on YouTube's terms. My terms. I'm hosting privately held live streams. They're smaller and easier to manage. I'm posting exclusive VIP-only adventure vlogs. I also do giveaways, discounts, personalized promo codes, shoutouts, deal alerts when silver and gold is on sale on a variety of different websites. And of course, you can watch all of my videos early and commercial free. Come join the Precious Metals VIP Club. It'll be the first link in the description. You're invited. I'd be happy to have you. And if you guys enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. If you guys like me, make sure to hit that subscribe button like a Karen hits a bus window. Also subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content. Bunch of brand new videos over there. I posted one about China banning cryptocurrency, one about AT&T cutting its dividend, other videos about real estate, videos about silver, videos about gold, and a bunch of others. Go check them out. The link will be in the description. Trying really hard to hit 3,000 subscribers. We just hit 2,000, and I appreciate that. And if you want to help support the channel in the biggest possible way, please consider getting yourself some DYDSS merchandise. Of course, we have some precious metal themed t-shirts and hoodies, which are up for grabs, along with a ton of other products. T-shirts, hoodies, even stickers, many of which are raising funds and awareness for different charity organizations, such as the recently released Kraken Stackin' T-shirt, hoodie, sticker, and coffee mug, inspired by the beautiful two ounce silver Kraken coin, which, by the way, is helping us raise a little bit of funds and awareness for ocean cleanup charity organizations at no additional cost to you. It comes out of my pocket, not yours. And, of course, last but not least, the brand new DYDSS Karen Free Zone t-shirt, hoodie, sticker, and coffee mug. My name is not Karen. Any and all merchandise can be found by clicking the first link in the description section down below. Thank you in advance. It's more than appreciated. And I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know once again. In addition to industrial fabrication, in addition to jewelry, in addition to the coins, rounds, and bars, and in addition to silverware, what are some other uses that silver has that you would like to add to the list? What are some of your favorite uses, some of the most interesting uses, potentially photography, medicine? I always found those to be intriguing. I was always fascinated by that right there. But the list goes on. Like I said, silver has over 10,000 different uses. An incredibly versatile metal. I know that silver is not an investment. It's a hedge against inflation, but... Even though silver is not an investment, I almost look at silver as an investor. A very well diversified investor that has its feet in 10,000 different buckets. Thought it was pretty interesting, and I'm curious, what are your thoughts? Head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. And remember, don't you dare stop smiling. Peace.